Well, God bless you. So glad you're here this morning. Good to see all of you. Um, we're going to roll right into our message this morning, but I want to warn you that uh, we're doing something very different this morning. Um, you know, we're in this series we're calling Twisted, and this week, I just really felt of the Lord to kind of call a time out in the series because of, of some things I was feeling from the Lord, and I really wanted to make sure that our heart was right as we were progressing through this series. So we're going to call a time out for me preaching on the series. And what happened was this week as a staff, we were discussing this and making sure that our heart was right. And we ended up doing a podcast, which a podcast is a great opportunity for us to kind of unpack really the reasons for why we do things. And so uh, Brady and I made a podcast and, and it came out so good. It came out so well that, and it, and it really showed my heart well, that this morning I want to show you this podcast. This is going to be our message today. As you're watching the video, you'll understand why, and then I'll come up and finish this up after this video. So here's our message for today. Hey, welcome to the Victory Podcast. So glad for you to join us. We have been in the middle of our series called Twisted, and we felt that this was an appropriate podcast because, of course, the series um, talking about perversion that the enemy has has brought up a lot of questions. And so I'm here with our lead pastor, Jody, and we are going to dissect this Twisted series. So welcome, Jody. Well, thank you. Welcome, Brady. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> I'm trying to be professional here, you know. I say this because uh, I was thinking about this earlier. You know, we've talked about this, that these podcasts are good for kind of behind-the-scenes look. Right. At Because sometimes we preach these sermons and you hear it, but podcasts kind of give us a, an opportunity yeah. to do a behind-the-scenes and kind of why we're doing this and what we feel like the Lord's, you know, saying out of this or, or, or whatever. So I think this – and and this series probably more than any other would I think it would be helpful to right. have a behind the scenes look yeah. to explain why we're why absolutely we're so let me let me bring up this question why did we name the series twisted um you know that's been our discussion for the last couple of weeks uh let me start let me start with this let me answer first uh why we're doing this series okay okay this really is a. This has been in my heart for a few months um, about um, about this series, and and it really comes from from a scripture. Let me read a scripture to you. And I stole his Bible. I stole Brady's Bible because I had King James. I know you're looking all living. holy with two Bibles, <laughs> right. and I'm here with a cell phone. <laughs> so uh, I mentioned this last Sunday. If you were there last Sunday, you heard this. But it's Ephesians five fifteen and seventeen, and here's what it says. So be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. So it says the days are evil. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to mm. do. So this whole series really is based on this fact that we live in evil days and we're seeing culture right. you know, pushing things now. Yes. And, and this series says you got to be careful. So you got to know what the truth is. Right. You gotta you gotta understand how the Lord wants us to live. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason for this series. I really wanted to take some topics that I believe that culture is pushing on us, and I wanted to give a a biblical an answer through a biblical worldview. Right. Teach people how to have a biblical worldview, how to consult the Bible, and find out how we're supposed to right. live in that way. So that's kind of the heart behind this series. Now, in that. This really has revolutionized me. The Lord said, showed, kind of gave me some revelation on that word pervert. And I don't know that I've communicated it well. I hope I have because I, I really mean this, and this comes from a pure heart. What the Lord showed me about this is because I've said it from the pulpit, you know, that word can be used as a noun or a verb. <laughs> yeah. And we use it as a noun, it, we put the emphasis on the first syllable pervert right you know and that's how we pronounce it and that's usually referring to somebody who right who we would it's a negative connotation right yeah no one wants to be called that right and 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 i don't believe it's the heart of jesus to call people that so yeah. that if that's what you're receiving from this series i'm communicating it wrong and i apologize mm. what i really trying to communicate is the verb sense of the word which means to pervert something or to mm. alter something from its original course or design right and a couple of synonyms would be to distort or corrupt, okay? Mm. So in other words, according to our passage here, 
God has a way for us to live. The enemy would like to use the one weapon of deception, so deceive us, and get us into a perversion or a perverted right. lifestyle that would be a, a, a distortion of his original design. Okay, so that, and that's the facts of what I'm trying to communicate and the heart behind it. I hope my heart is heard in this, <clears throat> that we're not calling keep people perverts, right. perverts. We're not calling you twisted. Right. right. And so I brought that to our creative team and they came up with the idea of twisted. And so, but again, I hope that's, I hope that's not misunderstood. I hope we're not, I hope that doesn't come across negatively because we really are trying to show that the enemy would love nothing more to twist. Right. Because remember John 10, 10 is what we said the other day. The things of God bring abundant life and the things of the enemy brings right. death, death and destruction. And so the reason, if you don't hear anything else, please hear this. The enemy wants to deceive us mm -hmm. and and cause us to pervert a life a lifestyle from God's original design so that he can steal from us, kill us, and ultimately destroy us. See, the devil can't the devil can't hurt God. Right. Right? So you have these two kingdoms in opposition, but the enemy can't hurt God. So what he does is try to hurt what God loves. Mm -hmm. And so if he can take us created in God's image. And through deception, cause perversion that would ultimately end in in some negative things. It would be the blow that he would use against the kingdom right. of God. So that's the heart behind the series, the title, everything. I hope that that comes across. Right, which is why last week the series got very practical. Absolutely. And we brought up, well, I, we, I'll say you, <laughs> you brought up seven things that brings destruction in people's lives. Well, I brought up seven topics that are culturally relevant mm -hmm. that, that today we are dealing with in our cultures. And like, so let's take these seven cultures and let's run them through the filter of the word right. and see what God says about them. What's the biblical worldview on these seven topics? And so that's that's what we did last week. So I know, you know, it was, it was truth driven and it was very word driven, um, which again, I'm glad that you didn't preach your opinion. Right. that we, we stuck with the Word. But probably the best thing that came out of it was the revelation of husbands' roles, families' roles there. And that's... So can you expound on why that was so important to those seven things? Well, even in studying these things, because they all... I, I wanted to approach them from a positive standpoint because, you know, we dealt with some touchy... Like, we dealt with the big... Some of the big issues like transgender and homosexuality and stuff. And... Of course, we could go to the book of Leviticus and pull out all that stuff. Right. And I'm not saying, I'm not afraid of that. Right. And I'm not saying we should cower away from the word. But I just thought, you know, to make things palatable, let's approach this from a positive standpoint. And so in doing so, we looked at God's original design for family. And honestly, I got revelation from the study of it because what I saw was how beautiful the picture, first of all, the, 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 the beauty of the picture of marriage, how sacred of an institution that is. And my my own value of marriage grew mm -hmm. as I was looking through this, and I, because it really is a picture of Christ in the church. Right. So my value of marriage. And then I thought, you know, a healthy, beautiful, sacred marriage produces children. And now we have not just marriage, we have family. Right. And then you look at God's original design for that, of how beautiful it was, and how we all know, I mean, I hope this isn't condemning, but if you were raised in a dysfunctional family, you don't like it. Right. You weren't like, oh, I was so glad I was raised in dysfunction. No, because we have seen healthy marriages, and even the healthy marriages we see are dysfunctional to some. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was raised in a healthy home, right. but there's still dysfunction there because there's humanity. Right. Um, but the beauty of the family and how all of society, everything in society flows from family, and so... My own revelation kind of expounded, and then if if family is everything, then God has called the husband to be the head of the family. So, okay, now the responsibility fell on me, which honestly I, I would have taken rather lightly had I not compared it again to Christ in the church. Because when you look at Christ in the church, you see that he is the initiator. He's the one right. responsible. He has taken responsibility 
to present a bride to himself. Mm-hmm. And so anyway, it, it, it was eye opening for me. I hope it resonated with our people. Right. You know, so. so let's let's move into the to the role of um, after you mute yourself on there. Sorry. Um, no, it's all good. So let's let's move into the role of what we have the how can I say this? Because a lot of people think, oh, pastors, you got an easy job. Like it, I want I don't know if people understand the wrestle that we have with compassion for people, holding to truth, and showing love. Like the tiptoe, um, the way that we've been talking about it, the minefield that we're trying to wrestle through with with holding God's truth, but also speaking truth and love. Yeah, because, you know, um, from this last week, we got some good positive feedback, some people who appreciated the fact that as a church, we would kind of take a stand and, and I, and and that's kind of my natural gearing because I'm churched. I'm I've been raised in church, mm-hmm. but then I also got some feedback from some people who, um, you know, who who appreciate it. But they also helped me with my perspective, and it really has launched me into a couple of days of turmoil, where I've been looking at some resources and doing some things. Going, Lord, help me, because honestly, I what I would like to say to you, to any of you out there, is that pastors are human too. I mean, we wrestle with our humanity, right? right? And so um, I'm a pastor, and so I have truth, but also I'm a lover of Jesus, and I want grace and love. And what I've come to understand is there really is, there can't be grace without truth, and there can't be truth without grace. You know, I mean, the two right. are in tandem. And so I wish. I wish all of you, especially if, if something I said offended you on Sunday, or if Christianity has offended you, I wish you could have sat in our staff meetings and watch us wrestle with, we love people. I mean, mm-hmm. I want to love well, and I don't always do it. I, I don't, because I'm human. Right. I, but I want to love well, but I also want to um, hold to the Lordship of Christ, you know, and so... There's truth and there's love and there's grace. And obviously Jesus did that perfectly. Right. And so he's our example. So we're looking to him like where would Jesus be yeah. in this moment, you know? And 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 I've been laboring over it. Honestly, it was my idea to even do this podcast because I, I hope to that you would look at me and see a heart that says, This guy loves me. Right. But he also loves truth. And and how do how do those two work? You know, yes. How do we love somebody caught up in, um, in in the homosexual lifestyle? You know, those are the kind of the big ones, the big subjects now. And mm-hmm. and I've been doing some research on that and saying, God, I, I want to love homosexuals well. I don't. I want them to want to come to our church, right? And I want to keep. It's all a sin issue, right? And sin mm-hmm. is sin. And I want to. I just want to be better at that at yeah. helping people navigate that, see the beauty of our Lord and what He's redeemed us from and how to walk in freedom. That's what I want. And so navigating that, though, is really tough. And I've had I've had two thoughts. I don't want to give too much away because, honestly, probably whenever you come into my office and said, hey, Brady, can you preach Sunday? One Sunday. Uh, This is probably what I'm going to preach. But I got a whole new revelation of Romans 12 about the transforming power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And because that's where I've always battled with this is I've never been caught up in addiction such as drugs or, you know, or never been attracted to the same sex. And and because of that, um, I, I really haven't had many battles in my life yeah. when it comes to that type of stuff. And so I forget, I, I always worry, okay, someone who's lived in this lifestyle for so long, how can they come out? Like, how do you just, okay, I'm not going to feel that way anymore. But then when you look at Romans 12 about do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed and how the Lord, he's, he's the designer of our body. So right. that means that the Lord, he literally rewires your brain He the, about the renewing of the Christ. It's a transformation power that the Holy Spirit does in your life. Right. And that's the thing that, that breaks my heart for people is going, I've tried, especially with addiction. I happen to pick up um, somebody on the side of the road which is very uncommon for me. I, I, I would love to say, oh, I'm a good Samaritan all the time, but I saw a guy having trouble with his truck, and I stopped, and he, I said, man, I, I, I can't tow you, but I can bring you home. And I didn't know he lived like 20 minutes away. Right. And, of course, he gets in the truck, and I see the 
his arms and immediately I'm like, okay, this guy probably has a life of drugs. And I start talking to him, minister to him. Sure enough, he's been addicted to meth for and heroin forever. Wow. And and he this is what he said. He said, I got clean in 2010, but then five years something happened. And he says, and he calls me by my name because we just met, and he goes, Brady, I wake up every morning going, please don't do meth. Please don't do meth. Mm. And he goes, but then I have to. Right. I have to. And the only thing I could tell him, I couldn't just give him, well, keep trying because he's tried. Yeah. The only thing I could tell him was there's transformation power in the Holy Spirit. That's right. And I, I can't explain it. And we're not in control of that. That's the frustrating part. Right, this, absolutely. You know? I want to snap my fingers. Well, my him. heart is has been through this because we've been wrestling with this as a staff, and my heart is like, Lord, all I can do is share your word. Right. I can't transform people's lives. Mm-hmm. And, and so... I'm just saying, Lord, you just got to show up because if right. it's, and again, if it turns into arguments or debates, if we're just, if we end up debating issues, I have my information, you have yours, and that's not transformative. Right. And usually nobody changes in those yeah. situations. That's not our heart. That's not what we want because it's not productive. But I just want to say, Lord, I, you just right. do what you do, you know, and we just need the transformative power yeah. of the Holy Spirit at work in our lives. Hey, can I have my Bible back? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. But, you know, it reminds me what you said was I learned this years ago, and, and the Lord still has to remind me of it, even though I know it, is whatever I'm strong in, uh, yeah, <laughs> whatever a strength is for me, then I tend to be judgmental towards other, right. others on that. So if I've never had a drug addiction, mm-hmm. I look at the drug addict and go, well, just get over it. Come on, what's wrong with you? you know? Right. But there's other areas in my life where I want grace. Right. You know, in my weaknesses, I want grace. But in your weakness, I want you to act like like you should act, mm-hmm. you know. And so I want to say to people in the homosexual lifestyle, I'm getting more clarity um, about uh, the struggle's real. I get it. I'm, I'm not saying get over it. Yeah. Uh, because sin is sin. Right. And this, and I want to tell, you, tell them a story that I shared with the staff the other day. Um, I was working at my place the other day and, um, and I was by myself and just working, which is a, a, something I enjoy doing. And, and the whole day, um, there was, there was this person that, um, I was upset. Can with. you tell us his name? No. <laughs> and it has nothing to do with this subject. It has nothing to do with even this area. Right? Okay. It was somebody who's Completely disconnected, so please don't put it in and try to fill in the blanks. <laughs> but because you, nobody would guess. But there was this person um, who uh, just all day. It's like I wasn't praying for him. I mean, I could make it sound like I was praying for him all day. It was. I was just griping to myself. I mean, it was really ridiculous. <laughs> I was just griping to myself and even to the Lord about this person. And probably three hours into it, I felt the Lord do what He does. This is how He talks to me. I felt the Lord say to me. Hey, what do you want me to do to him? <laughs> and when he said this, because because I'm 49, and because I've walked with the Lord long enough, I knew instantly what he was doing. Okay. Because I felt the Lord say, "What do you want me to do to him?" And I'm telling you, in a second, I said, "Be gracious, mm. be merciful," because I know what the Lord was saying. Right. Because remember, the Bible tells us that the same judgment we uh, oh, yeah. measure out is the judgment that's going to come back on yeah. us. So I knew what the Lord was saying was, okay, I'll do what, however harsh you want me to be to him, but just know that that same harshness is coming back to yeah. you. And immediately I, I literally started quoting literally to myself, going, Lord, be gracious, be kind, be long suffering, yeah. be patient with him, Lord, work in his life. And I mean, it just all twisted. And honestly, it was selfish because I'm like, because <laughs> I want you to be kind because I still have my issues, you right. know? Yeah. And so please understand that as pastors, we're not saying we're perfect and have it all together and we're just waiting for all you people to get yeah. it together like we have it together. Yeah. That is not it. The same transformative power that's, that we want working in your lives, I want working in my life. Amen. The same living and active word that I hope is living and active you is living and active in me. So we're right. all in this process. So through this this wrestle over the last couple of days, the Lord, I tell, I was telling the staff, my compassion level has right. grown. Not that we're lowering standards or discounting the word, not, not, none of that. That all stays because the word is eternal. But my compassion level mm. uh, has, has just grown. Yeah, I agree. And I think that's what we as the church sometimes miss is that Jesus always had, he spoke with compassion. 
And I love that word compassion. It actually means two different things. It means compassion as we know it, but it also means anger. But not anger towards the person, but anger towards the enemy, anger yeah. towards the affliction. And one thing I want to read, and this is something that I, I think Jody's tired of me saying this because it's a scripture that I studied a couple weeks ago and it's been on the forefront. But this is John chapter 16. If you never read John 15, 16, 17, yeah, just go stuff. read it. I, I put it right there with the Beatitudes, Matthew 5, 6, and 7. Those These six chapters are probably my favorite in all of the Scripture. But this is Jesus praying. Um, look, it's all red letter, um, so th- that's how we know it's Jesus. And he said this in verse 12, 16, 12, There's so much more I want to tell you, but you can't bear it now. I always want to know what was he going to say. Like, what is that? All right. When the spirit of truth... You can't handle the you truth. You can't handle the truth. And he says, when the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit... When he comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, but will tell you what he has heard. Um, He will tell you about the future. He will bring me glory by telling you whatever he receives from me. All that belongs to the Father is mine, and this is why I said the Spirit will tell you whatever he receives from me. This is something that was so convicting to me because I forget the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Because immediately being a charismatic person, and all that, we think, Holy Spirit, praying in tongues. But He is the Spirit of truth. And I believe in the work of the Holy Spirit in people's lives more than I believe in my words in their life. And that's the challenge for us preachers, because we think the preaching is going to do it. Right. Which has actually started a conversation between us in the last few days is, okay, where does the preaching come in? Because the Word says, how will they hear unless there's a preacher? So we know that preaching is valid. Right. Absolutely. And what do we preach? We preach the Word. So there's Mm -hmm. two ingredients. But the other ingredient is the is the spirit of truth. It's right. the Holy Spirit, and and he he's the wild card. He's what changes everything, mm-hmm. right? And so what we're determined is it's our job to preach. Yes, it's our job to preach the word. But we're just saying we just need to give more space for the Holy Spirit, right. and not put the emphasis on my preaching. It's really right. on the Holy Spirit's work. Accompanied. Because my my the the Holy Spirit's job is to convict into the truth, not right. not Brady. That's right. My job is not to convict people. My job is to present the word, to present this, and then if you feel conviction, that is the Holy Spirit knocking on right. that door and saying, "Hey, let me come in, not so you can change yourself, but let me come in so I can start transforming your life." Yeah. And I forget that. I really do. Well, this even led into a conversation this week with us uh, because, again, I'm not trying to get you to people to feel sorry for pastors, <laughs> but I do want people to see that the, the humanity of pastoring right. is one of the things I admitted was that when I'm on the stage and I'm in preacher mode, mm. right, things come out, and sometimes I can even get caught up in the moment, especially if the if the good old boys or the church folks. Mm are back there going, hey, man, brother, you preach it. Well, man, next thing you know, I'm just, right. I'm going into preacher mode, and I'm like, I, sometimes I don't com- I don't think I communicate my heart well because I'm in preacher mode. Right. And which is one of the reasons I wanted to have this discussion because in this setting I tend to be right more able to unpack my heart and do it without slipping into preacher mode because I really am thinking about the person sitting in our congregation who one of these issues that we dealt with are real to them. I mean, it's mm-hmm. not, it's not, it's not something out there. It's their life. It's their, it's the way they think. It's the way they feel. It's what they're engaged in. Their life is tangled up in this. And right. and the preacher standing up there thinking that his job is to convict. So we mm. add more emphasis to it. And and we're in the Bible Belt, so we like it harsh. That's right. Yeah. And we throw it out there. Right. And with the idea that this is going to change them, you know. And and sometimes I get caught up in that, and I go, God, I don't know if that was you. I don't I don't know if I slipped into my own into the flesh there because what I really want is for the the Holy Spirit to gently, lovingly, in the way that He does, right. convict people's hearts. And I just want to be a source of truth, but also want to be a source of love and appreciation and, and acceptance and support and help people in right. this journey. And so that's our heart in this. I hope, I hope yeah. you can hear it. We're not condoning sin. We're Absolutely not, not. No, no. What we're doing is saying there's a way to speak the truth in love. Yeah. In 1 Corinthians 13, I was telling the staff earlier, I wish, I wish a film crew could follow us around and just record our conversations because I I think our church would be shocked at the depth of our conversations. Like we're not just talking about, hey, what songs are you gonna do this week? It's it's literally 
philosophy, theology. I mean, we even talked about natural law this week. In like, But it's funny, though, the way we talk about it. I don't know if other church staffs do this. I really don't. We don't... The way I, I say it is sometimes we don't end a sentence with a period. We end it with a question right. mark. And there are certain things, certain sentences you have to end in a period. Right. I mean, was Jesus sinless? Period. Yes. yes. There's no question mark there. You know, but some of the things we wrestle with, um, you know, we end in question marks like, would Jesus really do it this way? Would he say right. it this way? Is this the right posture? So it's not the content. Mm-hmm. But it's the packaging. It's the way we present right. it. I want to do it in a way that Jesus did it, because somehow Jesus had a way of holding to truth. He'd heal somebody and say, "Now go and sin no more." So it's not like he said, "Your sin's okay." He would right. call out the sin, but he would do it in a way that there was love and acceptance and right. obedience, and it was just beautiful. And I, I want to walk in that same anointing. If right. that makes sense. Absolutely. Because, so, you know, I mean, John 14, 12 says that the same things, the same works that I've done in greater. Do greater. Right. Sometimes we think of the supernatural, mm-hmm. but I'm like, if I could just do it without the healings, if I could just minister in the way that he ministered right. as far as people being able to hear it and it's palatable, that'd be fine with me, right. even if I never walked in the supernatural like mm-hmm. you walked in it. If I could just be as good as right. he is at at saying to the woman caught in adultery, go and sin no more. Yeah. But also saying, hey, you, wh- whoever's sinless, you can throw the first stone. Right. You know, navi- the way he navigated that was right. so beautiful. And the woman at the well and all these issues, it was so, mm-hmm. so much beauty and it was so effective. Right. I want to be that effective, you know. Right. So uh, anyway. No, I agree because sometimes I feel us church people are the ones with the stones. Right. And that doesn't show compassion. So for those who are listening, are in our church, who are like, oh, I don't deal with any of those seven things. I've never been divorced. I didn't cohabitate. I, I had My family looks great. No one's homosexual. Nobody deals with... Tra- Look, that's great. Yeah. But you got skeletons in your closet, oh, too. And absolutely. we all have tendencies, and we are one choice away. <laughs> Absolutely. From wrecking our lives. Yeah. And and so I think it's important to just realize um, the compassion that we need from the Lord, and we have to and receive grace from the Lord, and I have to give grace to others. Yeah. Because really this week what I told the staff is that I, um, after the feedback I got from Sunday and just kind of walking through it with myself, I, I wanted to call a timeout in this series and just go, let's stop. Uh, um, I... I think it's important that we state th- things through a biblical worldview. But this is not a rant. And if I have gotten into or if, if at any point it sounded like a rant, I apologize. That was not my heart. Um, and But just call a timeout and go, can we just all admit that we're sinners <laughs> yeah. in need of a Savior? Right. And the beauty is that Jesus came to redeem us from our sins. Mm. And he's purchased my brokenness. Yeah. And I am I'm in the process of being healed. Mm. And he's gentle and he's kind and, and he's bringing me through the process. And so I have grace for you. Would you please have grace mm. for me? And can we just do this thing well? Right. Um, and, and let's just let's just make sure that if as we continue in this series, that we do it with that heart. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. Um, that would be a win to me. Yeah, absolutely. Would you stand with us, please? I um, I hope that accomplished what we thought it was going to accomplish in that setting. It was just easy to present our heart. And so here's how I would like to uh, I'd like to wrap up today as we're we're closing. Is um, I just want to ask for the transformation, transformative power of the Holy Spirit to go to work in each of our lives. Because I don't know about you, but I still got some work need to be done in me, right? And so, can we just do this? Can uh, the, the the team's going to add a little background music to us? And and I just want us to bow our heads before our Father. And I just want to approach Him in humility. And I just want to pray over us and I want us to open our heart up to the work of the Holy Spirit. Not just today, not just in this moment, but every day that the the, the work of the Holy Spirit would happen in our lives. So would you just, whatever posture 
says to the Lord that you're open, would you just engage in that posture right now if it's hands lifted or whatever it is? And let's pray. Lord, Jesus, once again, we say that you are head of the church and we're just, we're just managers. We're just under shepherds. And Lord, but we're all broken, Father. We've all got issues. We've all got challenges. And we do speak the word and we love your word. We, we thank you that your word is living and active and it goes to work in us. And Lord, we thank you for preachers, for voices, for people who would speak truth. But ultimately what we need is the transform, transformative power of the Holy Spirit. So Holy Spirit, I invite you into my life to change me, to change me. In Jesus' name. Lord, I invite, Holy Spirit, I invite you into every drug addict's life here today in Jesus' name. That you would break drug addiction. You would break alcohol addiction. You would break pornography addictions. You would break lust addictions. Or you would break addictions of, of uh, dysfunction, Lord. I thank you that... that um, the generational curses of divorce and dysfunction is broken today in Jesus' name, Lord God. Lord, thank you that you're making us whole. Lord, we break sexual perversion in any of its forms in Jesus' name, Lord God. Because Jesus even said that if you look at a woman with lust, you've committed adultery. That's sexual immorality as well. So we break every form. And we open ourselves, we yield ourselves to the working of your Holy Spirit to bring the freedom that you bring in Jesus' name. And if you agree with that prayer, just give me a really big, loud amen.